Hey tribe. Welcome to your Scorpio season, spirit animal guidance reading. We're gonna see what the overall energy influence lesson Scorpio season might be presenting us with over the next few weeks. I hope that this message finds you well and serves you well. Let's get into it. Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, Holy Spirit, what spirit animal guidance does the collective need for Scorpio season? Okay. We've got Stingray. Octopus. And Hummingbird. Okay. Now. This would be a strong, strong message around boundaries, peacock energy. Stingray can bring the message of developing a spine, standing for something, not allowing yourself to bend too, too much, especially at the mercy of octopus energy. Uh, Energies that don't know boundaries, don't respect boundaries. They might be aware of them, but they don't respect them. Um, this would be energies that have a warped sense of closeness or a warped sense around intimacy. Maybe this is you, maybe this is the people around you. That hummingbird energy, though, kind of signifies something could be fleeting, okay? Not lasting for too long, but significant enough to make an impact. A lot of water and some air here. Now, the stingray and the octopus could represent energies that are decaying out of your or your consciousness right now. Maybe you've strengthened your spine and your boundaries. Maybe you've been working towards that and you might have some good moments where you're able to kind of stand firm and then maybe there's still some work to do, right? I also get the message of be weary and careful of overthinking things in this season. That's the hummingbird again. Don't get too attached to the thoughts. Let them come and go. It's a form of meditation purpose of meditation right there be an observer of your thoughts this season maybe meditating if you are in some sort of practice maybe amping up a little bit more during this season can kind of help you stay grounded because i almost feel like what you might be up against in this season aren't how can i say that spirit what you might be up against are the voices of other people rather than your own the voices the attempted influence of other people and having to stand in your own energy so be very very weary of people wanting to uh hang on or cling on to you too tightly be careful and pay attention to what you might be hanging on and clinging on to in this season okay don't let your thoughts get the best of you. Okay, let's go ahead and get some additional messages from the book here. Let's start with Stingray. Opened right to water, but here we go. All right, Stingray is about developing confidence, a sense of self, or a spine. The Stingray card represents a pivotal point in personal growth. The moment has come when the stingray must decide between the old, which is easy, comfortable, and familiar, and the new, challenging, uncomfortable, and unfamiliar. Pressure from family and friends makes the decision even more complicated. No matter what choice is made now, it's inevitable that this dilemma will surface again and again. As the force of Dharma growing within the stingray is too strong to ignore. 
So when the stingray is in balance, it is eager and it wants to grow. When it's out of balance, it blames others and it quits. To bring the stingray into balance, you wanna move through the discomfort. Okay, so uncomfortable, change, shift, energy. Excuse my pupper if you can hear him. But there could be some repetitive discomfort that you might find yourself in the midst of again this season. Maybe there's something very specific about this time of the year for you that either brings up heavy emotions, heavier energies, a lot of pressure from different directions, okay? Let's get into the octopus. The octopus is about reaching, yearning, lacking boundaries and direction. The octopus signifies a wonderfully perceptive mind paired with a lack of healthy boundaries. Unfortunately, this results in well-intended but messy relationships. The octopus entwines itself into other people's business and shares their own without restraint. They believe that's what it means to be close. If you notice after spending time with someone that you feel drained or uneasy, the essence of octopus is at play. Begin to establish healthy boundaries. Be patient and firm. It may be a very old habit to change. So when in balance, the octopus energy is interested, engaged, and intelligent. When out of balance, it is needy, clingy, lacks courage. To bring into balance, create space to oneself, and maybe do some talk therapy. Okay. So this definitely feels like a situation could be bleeding into other areas of your life. Again, this could be outside energy, someone wanting to kind of get their tentacles into your energy, into your business. So be mindful of who you talk to. And trust that feeling, okay? If it's not you, <laughs> um, collective, trust that feeling when, when you know someone is intentionally trying to pull energy from you, whether it is conscious or subconscious on their end, when you get that nudge that someone's trying to drain you or using you to fill a void or kind of gravitating or pulling on you because they can't pull from within themselves, be patient and firm with the boundaries that you need to set with that energy, okay? Because now is not the time. It feels like you need your energy for your path okay so if you feel that call to take a step back take it back it's okay all right i do get that there could be energies really really curious about you or like yearning to kind of know more from you so you could be very kind of recluse already don't kind of buckle into people's curiosity people got to learn how to mind their business right and maybe this is, again, maybe there's something that you might feel might be overstepping a boundary. Be mindful of what you're sharing as well, okay? With that um, scorpionic influence, just anything you don't want anybody to know, just keep to yourself, okay? Or if you know people kind of run their mouth, don't share your good news or don't share really any news with anybody, okay? The hummingbird energy, though, is positive, enthusiastic, spiritually resourceful. Inside the tiny hummingbird resides an endless well of energy and positivity. The hummingbird's secret is that it has learned where to gather nectar, and it returns to these sources daily for nourishment and rejuvenation. This sacred elixir springs from many sources but usually involves nature, creativity, and exploring spirituality. Follow the way of the hummingbird and you cannot go wrong. Every droplet of life becomes sweet, every moment worth savoring. So when the hummingbird is in balance, it is smart, it is curious, and it loves to learn. 
when it's out of balance, it can be pushy, insistent, and sharp. To bring into balance, you might want to consider taking a class, okay? So it's putting all that mental energy to good use, good purpose. Putting all of that will to good use, good purpose. It almost seems like you know what rejuvenates you. You know what replenishes you. Maybe getting that done, doing that thing, whatever it might be, creating that space could be a little difficult in this season. I kind of feel like I'm speaking to a collective of y'all where around this time, for whatever reason, people seem to really like need you the most. That neediness. Whether that's based off of other people's fears, whether that's your own neediness based off your own, okay? Remember, always check yourself first before you project anything outward onto anyone. So maybe there's also you dealing with these energies outside of you and then it's getting you to reflect on maybe how you might exhibit or mirror that energy. Only take what resonates, okay? Let's pull a little bit more here with some tarot. Thank you so much, Divine. Clarify the Stingray energy. Oh, all right. Card flew across the floor. Hold on one second. Ooh. Okay, I had to go on an adventure for that one. And of course, who is it? And this is what I mean. This is the energy I'm speaking about that might be trying to come in and penetrate, infiltrate, get in where they are not allowed. El Diablo, right there, okay? So again, this energy of fear. I almost feel like this could be, for some of you, projection. People trying to push their will onto you. Again, Scorpio strongest factor about them is their will they just have to learn how to use it properly um and maybe this is it in the two of cups situation someone is used to exerting their will either over you or this might be somebody connected to you here tribe that's trying to strike out on their own or create some sort of independence okay maybe this is someone that you lean on quite a bit that might be growing in new ways or needing a little bit of time to themselves only take it as it resonates okay again we always check ourselves clarify el diablo here with the two of cups for stingray oh okay you've got strength and one more card that flipped up here and the king of cups you could be waiting on someone to grow a backbone here uh, maybe you're outside looking in on a situation here Hoping that a King of Cups gains some sort of strength. This could be you, okay? This could be a time to exhibit some form of strength, of emotion. This feels like if this is outside energy towards you, this is someone who knows how to toy with you emotionally or get emotional waves out of you. Or they know something about you or they think they know something about you. Again, this could be even someone exposing themselves as being this kind of octopus energy, this person who might be a stingray, they maybe don't have a strong spine, easily influenced by the wind, you know, whichever way the energy flows, they go. So I don't know, take it again only as it resonates. This could be somebody that you were in a relationship with, that you're currently with. Maybe this is also the expectation. Maybe you're used to someone, again, not being able to stand up for themselves within some sort of connection that has some form of control over them, possibly. Yeah, the Ace of Wands. This could be somebody who's like easily, um, either easily manipulated spiritually or like sensually, sexually in a way. Take it as it resonates again. Mars is here with the eighth house energy of Scorpio. Then you got the Knight of Swords. This would be pay attention. Okay, pay attention to how 
for whoever this is going to be for. Pay attention to how this person talks to you or speaks to you or how quick they are to kind of say something, communicate in a way that's like disrespectful, I'll say. I feel like I'm tapped into a group of y'all where you've been putting up with something that your spirit is ready to put down, no longer deal with. Scorpio season could be ushering in the end of something so that something new can begin this hummingbird energy. So you could be ending something or multiple things with stingray and octopus energy. You could be embodying any of those two in any of these dynamics and that's what needs to come to an end your embodiment right the ace of swords so that's the truth and you've got judgment in reverse there's pluto yeah this could be ending something for good something not returning not coming back up this could be the last time the last cycle or a last opportunity or chance for you to bring an end to this behavior, whether this is within a relationship dynamic, a friendship, work partnership, contract, you versus you, take it how it resonates, okay? Clarify this octopus energy, yeah, it's the five of wands. So this octopus is the opposer or the challenge oh yeah 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 okay um be mindful of your own weaknesses this season they're gonna be tested yeah you got the four of wands This feels like testing from energies, people, places, things that seem to know whether they do or not, okay? This could be their own. They think they know your weaknesses and they're trying to figure it out. This is someone trying to figure out a weakness of yours or exploiting a weakness of yours in some way. Or you exploiting your own weaknesses and you might not even be aware of it, okay? Take it only as it resonates. But the five of wands, the four of wands, and the three of wands, three, four, five with the ten of swords. Yeah, this is how this builds up. So something either is positioned as optimistic, something might shift, something might change. I'm recommitted, with, especially with the two of cups. This could be within yourself. This could be, again, a dynamic between you and someone, you and an environment you within some form of agreement and then you meet this five of wands challenge i just heard how many times are you going to fall for the same thing just like the book said something will return again and again so it's necessary for you to have a boundary because what you cannot change is people but what you can change is yourself so this is about you no longer setting yourself up for the okie doke almost. Like, <laughs> that's such a saying, shit. Excuse me. Um, like, <sighs> this is a habit that someone is going to realize, someone's coming into a deeper awareness around that they position themselves to either be mistreated, be exploited, like someone that they trust isn't trustworthy can't tell your business to everybody what can you keep for yourself it's okay to gatekeep your own stuff like it's somebody who maybe again either has a hard time setting boundaries or a hard time respecting boundaries or just isn't aware of what healthy boundaries are maybe they have boundaries but they're not healthily in place or what they think they should have boundaries around, they don't need to have boundaries around. And then what they need to have boundaries around, they have none whatsoever. Warped, okay? So it's like someone keeps expecting someone to shift, expecting someone to change judgment in reverse. It's not happening. So when you hit that wall, it's not the wall that shifts, it's you. Okay, that's the seasonal energy. It's not the wall that shifts. It's you, the Ten of Swords. 
okay clarify this energy between octopus and hummingbird here spirit thank you the star energy yeah it's you it's up to you coming into the truth of of what is okay what you cannot change which is what you pour out into the ground, how the star is typically depicted, and what you can change, which is what you pour back into you. Clarify the hummingbird, the seven of pentacles, with the five of pentacles. Okay, so this octopus energy could be a fire sign, okay? Take it as it resonates. Aries heavily with the three and four of wands. Leo with the five of wands more specifically. How to embody the hummingbird energy might be more grounding than you think, even though it's an air energy. Because you have the five of pentacles and the seven of pentacles. With temperance at the bottom. Exactly. This is the lesson. This is what needs balancing. So your boundaries will be tested. Okay. Your emotional boundaries at that more specifically maybe even your spiritual boundaries with all the fire here and then you got the sun definitely maybe a leo could be testing your boundaries testing their own boundaries and limits this could definitely be centered around a child maybe a child who's coming of age with the knight of swords okay clarify um the five of pentacles and the seven of pentacles for hummingbird here Thank you, spirit. You've got the fool. Yeah, that's the key to your new beginning. That's the key to a fresh start. Five of Pentacles is that step out on faith. The seven of Pentacles is that review in the Wheel of Fortune again. Change of fate, new fresh start. A shift happening. It feels like with the five and seven of pentacles, these are either lessons that have been learned over time or there's a need to remember what you learned, remember what you went through, remember how things ended up worked out when you were at the five of pentacles and when you were at the seven. Were they not both opportunities for newness, for change, wheel of fortune, for shift? So something about, again, with this, uh, how the Stingray card said you'll encounter this again and again. This is something that might not necessarily go away. It's just you're going to have to learn how to navigate it. You see that compass? You're going to have to learn how to navigate it and how you choose to navigate it might be reflective of your own North Node energy with the Star card. Okay. Let's clarify judgment in reverse on the star. Thank you so much, Spirit. You have the six of cups for judgment in reverse. Yeah. Definitely could be a child or again, your inner child work that's coming up. Clarify the star. And the two of pentacles wanting to kind of be in reverse here with the chariot. So what this says is like, it's almost like straddling the fence isn't going to help this situation. Making clear, distinctive choices will. Or decisions around what you're going to let go of, what you are going to hold on to, what you're going to pour back into you in that star energy. Yeah, in order for something to move forward. So whatever's happening right now is definitely destined to this is definitely a part of your spiritual growth journey. I think with that two of pentacles in reverse, whatever you need to let go of keeps a sense of work life, work life balance out of whack or out of reach in some way. Some of you definitely maybe need to really take a step back and really take some time off or take a vacation or kind of almost like i don't want to say let go of everything because clearly everybody has responsibilities but 
let go as of as much as you can okay and what I mean by let go is kind of like I think that's that boundary I also heard don't concern yourself yeah it's like there could even be a lot of drama maybe brewing around you in this season or people attempting to create drama around you Let's get some ending messages here, okay? All right. Clarify this energy a little bit more here, Divine. What ending guidance do you have? You got Zebra. Yeah. Let go of your fear and know that you are safe and protected at all times. So maybe that's what you got to let go of. The fear, that devil energy, the conditioning, the way of thinking that keeps you spineless or keeps you from standing on a boundary that you need to stand firm on or creating one in general, okay? It's like, it's okay to stand out star energy. Some of you could be um, holding back in some way. Yeah, holding back. There's octopus, clarify an octopus. Get out of here. Practice shape shifting by altering your physical appearance and mannerisms. So that tells me that whatever this infiltrating energy might be or whatever's trying to kind of get in, that you either already, again, have a bar up against, have a boundary up with, or you need to set one, it comes in many forms. Or it's a spirit that manifests through different people, different situations. So you're not dealing, again, flesh to flesh you're dealing with spirits and principalities so it's deeper it's not the person it's the spirit behind the person the spirit using the person okay that's what needs to be addressed could be dealing with someone who definitely shapeshifts again maybe makes it look like they're changing they're growing and they don't something about that is significant clarify Thank you. Take the time to listen compassionately to those you love, especially your family members. Yeah, you got the gorilla, which kind of brings about that village energy. I think even with listening compassionately, you might start to hear people's limits, people's fears, people's boundaries, and kind of understand a little bit more of where they're coming from, why they maybe are attempting to cling or to um, get in or hold on to you in some sort of way. Like, I think you'll be able to see something from a higher point of view here is what I'm getting. As long as you maintain control over your own emotions and don't let people get the best of you or your own thoughts get the best of you, okay? Staying grounded. You've got unicorn energy says indulge in your creativity imaginative and magical side through some form of artistic expression any sort of frustrations that you might have yeah get it out in some crafts or some arts or whatever that might be writing singing dancing painting sculpting journaling whatever walking spending time with nature whatever it might be okay get into a creative space yeah I, I think it's again this feels like something you aren't going to be able to detach from you have some sort of commitment with but it's how do you navigate that commitment okay some of you could feel like an obligation take it as it resonates okay you got walrus remain vigilant about the current situation pay attention to signs omens and let them dictate your choices again take time to listen compassionately so someone's definitely going to either confess some sort of fears to you if this is someone trying to challenge you trying to come up against you there they might tell on themselves in some way like in some sort of expression towards you or in their normal kind of attempt to wear you down in a way yeah this definitely feels like a nagging energy okay again someone who does not have a healthy sense around healthy boundaries or appropriate boundaries okay and that's not an excuse that's just the case and again i think you might 
okay, see it from a higher point of view as to how this person got there, why they struggle with boundaries or whatever they might be dealing out of. You're going to see the fear for what it is, okay? And once you see that fear, transmute it. Again, maybe through that creative process, okay? But know and trust that you are protected here during the season. Let me know if any of your favorite animals showed up in this reading in the comments down below or your thoughts on what resonated with you. I love to hear that from you all and I'll see you in our next one. Namaste.